Hello, and welcome to the Fall 2016 webinar series for WIN 911, the most widely used alarm notification platform in industry and IIoT. My name is Michelle Costa. I'm the Sales Operations and Marketing Programs Manager here at WIN 911 Software. Before we get started, there are a few things I'd like to point out. There are two listening options available, a teleconference number and an audio broadcast. Both options can be accessed on the menu bar. Also, to eliminate background noise and ensure a clear audio experience for all attendees, the lines have been muted. Should you have any questions during our discussion, please type them in the questions or chat box and we will respond to them at the end of the presentation. Our topic today is exploring data sources, the use of filters and labels to streamline the alarm notification process. Joining us this morning from WIN 911 Software are Stephen Revis, Product Manager, and Keith Hayes, Account Manager. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, this is Stephen Revis. I'm the Product Manager here at WIN 911. And today we're going to talk about data sources and uh, subscriptions and how they can help you create escalation uh, rules that, um, that uh, make configuration uh, easier to manage and uh, maintain. So our agenda today is going to be an alarm subscription overview. So I'll explain what alarm subscriptions are. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go through each one of our data sources that support subscription-based uh, alarming. And uh, we, I'll show you how each one of those uh, utilizes subscriptions and what you can filter on. And then what we'd like to do is, is show you guys the new InTouch data source. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a live demo of that. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and stop for questions. So um, like Michelle said, if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to, to type them in the chat box. And at the end, we can get to those. So what are subscriptions? So the, the simplest way to describe it is, when uh, Win91 can go to your SCADA system and it can say, uh, give me every new alarm that you have, or give me every alarm that you have, and any time that alarm changes state, give me that update. And so what that allows us to do is apply filters on those alarms that come into Win91, and depending on what those filters are, you can route those alarms to the people that need to hear about them. So what you're not having to do is in the old way that we used to do this um, is import a bunch of tags or manually enter a bunch of tags into Win 911 after you've already de defined them in your SCADA system. So the goal here is to eliminate the need to maintain two separate alarm lists. So and, and another benefit of this is that <clears throat> you get um, uh, dynamic changes on alarms. So for example, because we don't have a tag or an alarm defined in Win91, if that, that alarm uh, were to change a description on the SCADA side, change the severity, or change any property about that alarm, once that alarm is active, Win91 will automatically receive those new properties. So there's, again, there's no need to maintain two separate alarm lists. You change something in your SCADA side, it automatically is uh, input into Win91. So, how can you use subscriptions for your escalation? Um, when you define a subscription, and each one of our data sources that we have for Win91 Enterprise support subscriptions, you can filter on uh, different things, different, uh, different criteria about an alarm, and it's going to vary uh, for each data source because not every data source is the same. Um, once you create those filters or subscriptions, you can set them to or assign them to a strategy. And a strategy, if you uh, uh, participated in our last webinar, a strategy is a, a list of rules, uh, escalation rules of what Win91 should do uh, on a certain alarm condition. So, for example, if you get a new alarm, uh, Win91 should call this list of people. If that alarm were to change state, or, um, then let's re-notify those people or or um, let's uh, notify some other list. If the alarm's been active for a certain amount of time, let's take some other action. So that's what a strategy is. So when you create these subscriptions, 
you're assigning that subscription to a strategy. And what you can also do is when you create these subscriptions are, is attach a label to the subscription. And so what that will do is every alarm that comes in through your subscription will automatically wear this label or a badge. So you can see in my example at the bottom of the screen, I've got a filter. This is for, uh, this particular filter would be for a factory talk alarm and events. I'm filtering specifically on class or alarm class. And I'm saying if the class of an, if an alarm comes in and it's a, mem it's a member of the pump station number two class, let's assign a label to it called pump station number two alarms. And then let's send that to a strategy. Here I have it set to default, but it would, in a real world scenario, it would say something else. Uh, and then once you, once you do this, now WinRAM is going to start receiving alarms from your data source and it's going to be attaching this label to all these alarms. And you can use that label in your tactics. And your tactic is a, a simply a, a call out list, essentially. It's a flow chart of who needs to be notified. And so we can use that label in a tactic. This is an example of what a tactic would look like. So you're starting from the, stop, the, the, the green dot there. We're hitting this label decision block and it's saying, uh, is, does this alarm belong to pump station number two alarms? And if it does, let's notify the pump station operators. And what's interesting about uh, this tactic that you're seeing is you're not seeing any one person's name in here. And so what that means is that your escalation is entirely dynamic, meaning if you do get this alarm and you're telling it to notify these pump station operators, any connection within your Win91 system can be assigned that pump station operator role. So when you create your connections, you assign them a role of whatever it may be, and again, in this case, pump station operators and then you're not having to edit your escalation. So subscriptions and labels are a way to continue the dynamic, uh, um, dynamic escalation in Win911. So if you take advantage of these features, you'll find that you won't need to edit your escalation rules ever uh, because it's always set up. If you set up your filters correctly the first time, then they, they should continue working for you. So. What I want to do is just talk you through each one of the data sources that support subscriptions and how the subscriptions work. And, uh, and we'll start off with Simplicity. So Simplicity, um, <clears throat> we can filter on four different things. First being um, point IDs. So point ID is a, more or less the name of an alarm in Simplicity. And What's, if you do select specific point IDs, what we do is we give you the ability to create a wildcard uh, filter. And so you can wrap uh, your filter terms in a, in a wildcard character and say, let's say I, I'm interested in every alarm that comes out of simplicity that has the name tank in it. So I can set my wildcard filter to filter everything with the letters T-A-N-K. Uh, class names, so we can filter on class names. That's going to be the same kind of filter. So if we choose specific class names, we're going to be able to do a wildcard filter on that guy. Same thing with resource IDs. But um, all class, and then the class orders will let us um, set a particular number for class orders or set a range of class orders. So we can uh, set, uh, uh, just do we have a range selector there where you can say, give me all the alarms starting at this point and all the arms starting at, ending at this point. Or we can set a specific order value. So if we want just alarms that have this particular order value, then uh, we can do that. So next is going to be I, IFIX. So IFIX is uh, less things to filter on. And, and what we can filter on is going to be dependent on the data source, um, the data source itself. So we'll use whatever we can use when we create a data source. So just some, some data sources don't offer as, uh, as many things to filter on. So here we're doing a specific block name. So you can see the same, the same um, thing I was mentioning earlier in the simplicity filter is that if I do select specific block names or any name, any specific name filter or criteria, 
I get this wild card option. You can also choose uh, regex or regular expression, um, and you can type in in advance as you want regular expression to uh, match or not match alarms, uh, well, well alarm properties. We also filter in iFix on alarm area. So a good way to set up an iFix uh, filter would say every alarm that you are interested in sending to Win911 uh, in iFix, just assign, create an area in iFix called Win911, for example. Or you can call it, what obviously you can call the area whatever you like. But let's say you called an area Win911, and then every alarm that's in iFix that you want Win 911 to know about, when you create that block, just assign it to the Win 911 area in addition to any of the other areas that you are using. So that way, you're not having to come and touch Win 911 at all. Every time you create a new block in iFix, it, uh, you just put that area on there and it automatically goes to Win 911. So next, we'll go to Factory Talk Alarm and Events. So you'll, you'll start to I think see a, a theme here. I mean, uh, we're going to try and always filter on alarm name, uh, but here we've got alarm, um, uh, alarm severity. So we've got the severity range again. So we can set the low severity range and the higher severity range or upper limit of the severity range. We can set a specific severity value. So if we only want um, alarms that are uh, have a severity of 1,000. Um, again, name. So we've got um, all names or specific names. So this would give me every alarm that has the word fresh in it and is in the severity range of 500 to 1,000. So on the bottom there you can see class. So this is going to filter on a alarm class. This is very similar to iFix in a, in, a, in a good way to set up your alarms in alarm and events. Is if you sign, if you, if there's a particular class that uh, alarms are assigned to that means that Win911 wants them. So again, let's create a class called Win911. Every time you create an alarm in Factory Talk, just assign it to that same class called Win911, and then Win911 will receive that alarm automatically. So um, you can also use you can use classes not just to say, hey, let's go to Win911, but you can also use classes to represent uh, groups that need to be notified. So let's say. I created a class called freshwater and I created a class called uh, wastewater. So I'll create my first filter to filter uh, all alarms that are part of the, the freshwater class. And my second filter will filter all the alarms that are part of the wastewater class. And then those can go to different strategies and, and notify different, totally different sets of people, um, depending on who needs to hear about the alarm. So, Let's move on to the InTouch data source. So for the InTouch data source, what I'm going to do is uh, switch out of the PowerPoint and go to a, uh, a live demo. So what I'd like to do is just show you how, um, how subscriptions work um, for InTouch. So let me exit out of here, jump over here, and let's jump into the GUI here. So what you're seeing here is a configuration uh, workspace of Win91 for InTouch. Um, so you can see that we've got um, uh, several workspaces under InTouch laid out. And we kind of lay these out in the order that we would like people to, to, to do them or to configure them. So what we'll do is we'll start off with configure InTouch subscription. So what we're doing here is we're creating a subscription, uh, a filter if you will. So if we hit the plus button down here, we get a new subscription and we're going to call, I don't know, let's call this, um, uh, just we'll call it freshwater alarms or something like that. And of course you can name it anything you like. And then we have these three filter, uh, these three different criteria that we can filter on in InTouch. So very similar to all the other ones that we were talking about. Um, so first we can filter on tag name. So if I wanted a a specific tag name, I can select that. I've got my wild card here. Here, so I will. What I'll do is I want every alarm that has fresh water in the name of the, uh, the in the name of the tag. 
So what I've done is I've wrapped that with my wildcard characters. So what that's going to say, anytime this subscription is evaluated, we're going to check to see if that tag name has fresh water in the name. If it does, it matches this filter right now, or this subscription. So we can go further and we can filter on groups. So we could do specific group. And again, you can use wild, you don't have to use wildcard characters if you know exactly what your group's going to be called or you know exactly what the tag name would be called and you wanted to do something specifically with that tag name, you could you could type it in without the wildcard. But um, look, a common um, uh, in touch group would be a system. So you, if you were using groups within in touch, you could use the group filter similarly to how I just explained uh, alarm classes in factory talk and alarm areas in iFix. So you could create a, a Win 9 and 1 group in in touch and put all your alarms that you want Win 9 and 1 to know about in that group and then we can filter on it. So that's one neat way you can use a specific group uh, filter. And the next one is uh, priority, priorities, just like uh, the, all the others. So we can choo choose a specific priority range and we can move this slider around. So we can say, I only want alarms that are, uh, let's see. honestly, I think it's either a type of mint. So I'm going to type of mint. You can do 500 to 999, which is the max uh, priority in, in touch. And so now we're saying every alarm that has fresh water in the name and is between 500 and 999 severity. So just like before, with the, with the labels I showed you, you can assign a, a label to this filter. So every alarm that does come into this filter will have this label. And you can assign more than one label uh, depending on what, uh, whatever will fit your need for the, the kind of escalation you're trying to do. Uh, so we could save that guy, and now you see you've got a, a filter here. And as you can see, there's another one over here. This is a default subscription that we include with the product, and you can make as many of these subscriptions as you want. So these subscriptions currently aren't doing anything. They're just subscriptions that we have created, and to use them, you have to apply them to an application. So the next step is to configure an application. So with our new InTouch connection, we uh, this connection is very different from our version seven connection. If you're if you're familiar with that, we're using uh, different technologies to make this connection possible. So the the first major difference is that you no longer have to run Win 911 on the same machine as InTouch. You can run Win you can run Win 911 on the same machine as InTouch, but it's not required. And the way we're talking to it is over the network. So you can see here I've got a name field for an InTouch application. I can type in anything I like here. It's just a user-defined name. And then I've got a node name field. So here I can type in the uh, machine name of the computer hosting the window viewer application I'm wanting to talk to. Obviously, in this case, it's on this machine, so I've typed in localhost. You can also type in an IP address here uh, as well. So I'm going to leave mine as localhost because it is on this machine. We also include this Browse button here so you can, uh, you can select the machine that it's running on. So we've got um, uh, one, one more thing uh, about the remote connection is that I can connect to more than one InTouch application. So you can see I have one here. So if I have, this on, if I have an InTouch application on this machine and I have another one on... Um, some other machine, like an in-touch machine, for example, I can monitor window viewer applications uh, remotely. So, I, and I can do multiple in-touch applications at the same time. Uh, so, so that's a new feature there. And another thing that I'm sure someone will ask me about is a reconnection. Uh, if we lose our connection to in-touch, uh, we will reconnect with this with this new direct connect. So, um, close out of this guy and go back to the one that I have. And refresh them. There are watchdogs. So now we can, uh, we've got watchdogs. Watchdogs are a way for us to uh, define a particular tag within your InTouch application uh, for a changing value. So we're checking for um, an alarm change in InTouch. And I believe we're also checking for a 
value change. If we don't see a value change or an alarm change within a set timeout, which by default is 90 seconds, we can create an alarm on that. A uh, good way, what you could use with the, the way you could use a watchdog is to monitor something like the minute uh, tag in a PLC or something, and you, then you could say you could create this watchdog and say something like PLC uh, number five down or disconnected or something like that, and you can create as many watchdogs as you like. Uh, my InTouch demo is not uh, configured to support a watchdog. I don't have a tag that's with that's a changing value right now that I want to. The type. Actually, that's not true. You could use the the I think it's the dollar sign minute tag uh, if you wanted to monitor specifically to your InTouch application. Uh, all right. So subscription route. So earlier I said that the subscriptions aren't in use until you assign them to an application. So this is how you do that. So when you create your application, you can edit your subscription routes. So a subscription, you can see I've got a subscription here. It was that all alarm subscription that was included by default, and I'm assigning it to the default strategy. The default strategy in Win91 will notify everyone in the system of the alarm. If you had other strategies, I think I have a do nothing strategy in here as well, or do not notify strategy. Um, but if I had my own custom strategies in here, I would select them. Uh, you can add more than one subscription route, and then these uh, subscriptions will be evaluated in the order that they're placed, meaning if I have a filter here and my alarm gets caught in this subscription, that alarm will never make it to this subscription. So it's being pulled out here and it won't continue to cascade down. Uh, so that's what that's about. And again, you can have as many um, subscriptions or routes, I would say, in a, assigned to an application as you need. Um, so that's how that's how you take the subscription and in touch and assign it to an application. Now the other data sources I showed you screenshots of, uh, they they're done a little differently, and this is the way we'll move in the future, and uh, and we'll we'll likely update the other uh, data sources to be more similar to this. The reason that we've done our subscriptions this way is because we support multiple applications, and we want to be able to use the subscriptions we create back here on more than just a single application. So, so we can create all our, our, all our subscriptions here and they'll be available to every application as I need uh, when I'm assigning them to, to the application. So, so that is uh, how you assign a subscription uh, to, um, to InTouch. So I'll remove this guy because it's not really doing anything. So I'll leave it on all alarms and I'll change my strategy back to default and let's see, and we'll hit, go ahead and save it. All right, so right now I have an InTouch application set up with the filter, but before we go uh, and show the, the application, I want to talk about tags real quick. Uh, if you don't want to use subscriptions and, and you just you love maintaining two separate uh, alarm lists, we didn't take that away from you. You can still do that. And when you create a tag in Win91, you choose um, the type that it is. And this is going to be true for all most of all the other note data sources except for Factory Talk. So if I'm doing iFix and I don't want to do sub, uh, the subscriptions or the filters, I can define individual blocks. And it would be very similar to this. So let's say I want a discrete alarm. So I select discrete and I hit select. I can type in the name, and here I have to type in the tag name exactly as it is in InTouch. I can choose which application that tag belongs to. I can assign a label to that specific tag. And then I can go into my alarm section and enable or disable the alarms that would exist on that tag. So for a discrete, there's only one. Uh, it's that it's a discrete alarm, on or off. If we do an analog, you've got several types of alarms within a, within a single tag. And so you can turn off uh, some, if you just want the level alarms, you could go turn off your rate of change alarm or your deviation alarm. And you'll also see one, one benefit of, of doing the tags over the filters is that if there is a description in InTouch that you don't like, and you can't, and, and that you can't change, you can change it here by defining the tag here. 
And if you do define a tag within Win91, it overrides the subscription, meaning if I have um, a tag called freshwater here and I'm filtering for freshwater in my subscription, we're going to obey the tag that's been inputted over the subscription. So the, tag, uh, the tags take priority over the subscriptions. And that's going to be true for all the other data sources. The last thing to talk about would be the import. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a CSV file for you to, to look at, um, I guess. Um, you know, let's see if we can just make one real quick. We'll go to our application manager. Uh, no. Let me shut this down. I want to show this to you guys real quick. Apologize, I should have been more prepared. So we'll go to in touch. I'll select my application I'm working with. The, we're doing the same thing we did before. We need a, a database dump, so we'll select that. Uh, I'm going to dump it to my C drive if I can. If it'll let me out of this pro program. Can someone someone tell Wonderware to get rid of this exporter because I don't like it. There we go. Oh no, I see what it's doing. Never mind. I can't do that. All right, so we've created this dump. So now we have one configured application. So we need to configure the select the application we want to import to. And then we need to select this button to browse to our CSV file. I'll browse to where I saved that guy. And of course, it's going to be a hidden folder. Um, So we'll go to Program Data, select Test CSV, say OK. It found 28 tags in that file, and now we can go Next. It's going to list them all out here on the left side, and we can select them as we need. So I need all these, and you'll see that we have filter uh, columns on each one, So I, and you can do advanced uh, filtering with uh, is equal to or contains and that kind of stuff, so if you have a big uh, alarm list, you can filter that down pretty easily. Um, so I don't actually want to import any of these because they don't have alarms. You can see they all say zero for a number of alarms except for this guy. Uh, but I'm going to use that for something else. So I'm going to select prod level. And we'll hit the arrow and we can move them over. I guess I select another one too. And so now I've assigned these two uh, tags to be imported. So I'll go uh, next. Now I can see the alarms that are on the prod level tag, which was a, the level type of alarm. And I can choose that I, if I, if let's say for example I had a deviation alarm on here too, those would be there too. So I only care about the, the level alarm, so I'll move that guy over. I can assign it to a strategy now, and I can assign a label to it. So obviously with one single tag this doesn't seem uh, super powerful, but if you had 10,000 tags, for example, it would make it much easier to sort through them. Uh, and then, um, there we go. We've imported that two tags. One of the tags had an alarm on it, and it takes you to the beginning. We'll go ahead. Oh, it's because I left this open. I got that error. I want to cancel those changes. Refresh. And now i got those two tags in here. So that's how we do tags. Again, all the data sources that, other than Factory Talk, will also support tags, and um, they'll also support imports, uh, just like we did. It'll be slightly different depending because the SCADAs are different. Um, but uh, we, if you don't want to use subscriptions, you can still do it the old way. But you should use subscriptions because it's much easier uh, to set it up. So um, let's start up in touch real quick, and we'll show that demo. And then uh, we'll go ahead and take some questions. So window viewer. Ignore, I don't have a license on this guy. And you can see we already have an alarm right there. Uh, so we've got this log viewer here, which will uh, show us the alarms that are coming into the system. You can see we've got this React level alarm. You can see it here in my demo. Uh, it's showing the, fil the subscription that caught it. You can see the alarm condition that it is experiencing, which is a low alarm. 
that has returned to normal. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, see, so just updated there, so now it updated here. So what we're going to do is ACK it, and you can put a comment if you like. And we'll see it get ACKed right there. So it's the same direct connect as always, and you can see that new alarm came in. And we can ACK him as well. And then we can go into uh, this guy. I haven't shut him down in a while, so I've got to change my time. So you can see how many alarms. I, I just have this sitting here, so the same alarms keep going in and out, in and out. So you can open up one of the alarms, and you can see who act the alarm. You can see the log viewer act this alarm. If it was a notifier, you would see the notifier. Um, and you can see all the notifications that would be sent out, other strategy rules that you triggered, and uh, how it ran through a tactic. So that's a very quick explanation of the, uh, the InTouch uh, data source. So we are planning to do a pre-release on the InTouch data source on uh, November 14th. So if there are any of you guys that would like to participate in the pre-release, um, give it a go on any of uh, uh, your uh, demo systems or uh, development systems and uh, let us know how it worked for you. Just give us a shoot us an email, give us a call, and we can set that up for you. So now what we'll do is let's jump back over to my PowerPoint, and uh, if Michelle, well, we'll recap in touch real quick. Um, remember, it, you can do remote in touch. You can do remote connections in touch apps. Uh, you can monitor more than a single in touch app with a, with one Win9 one system. You can use subscriptions to filter on tag names, group, or priority, and we will reconnect now if we lose our connection. The old one, if you lost your connection, uh, you'd have to know to restart with 91. Which was, was always a pain to automate, but now uh, we take care of that for you. So uh, if, uh, if we have any questions, uh, Michelle will go ahead and read them out. And if there are any questions, if we run out of time and there are any questions we didn't get to, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and respond to those via email or give you guys a call. So uh, Michelle, if, um, if you have any questions, let's uh, go ahead and hear them. Okay, our first question. If I add new alarms to my InTouch alarm configuration, do I have to do a re-import like in version 7? So, the, so, that, so that's a great question. So again, if you're using the subscriptions, no. If you, you can change your InTouch application all you want, and if you set up your subscriptions that in a way that are going to bring the alarms that you care about into Win911, then you don't need to change anything in Win911. You don't need to restart anything. You just need to save your configuration in InTouch, restart InTouch, because you have to still save and restart InTouch to force your tag changes. But um, Win911, you don't have to change anything when you make those changes. But if you did, if you were doing the tag imports, you would. If you weren't using the subscriptions, you obviously would have to add them in if you weren't using subscriptions whatsoever. So, so use subscriptions, it's easier. All right, next question. Okay, um, what is the best way to use alarm tactics and strategies with the new InTouch import tool? Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that question, but I guess I would say if you want if you want to stick to a, the traditional way of doing things like we did with version 7, we have uh, what we call basic tactics where you can create a simple call-out list where you just put one person, one person, one person, just like, just like a group contact list in version 7. And you can run through the import and you create all these tactics in your strategies beforehand, before you ever run an import. And then um, once you uh, once you have those set, you can then import your tags. It's going to be way easier if you set up your strategies before you do your import because if you import a bunch of tags to the wrong strategy, you'll have to go through and change them all, and that can be a hassle. So, so uh, and uh, and another thing is it. it if you guys have questions, they don't have to necessarily pertain to what we're talking about today. If you guys have any questions about enterprise, please uh, go ahead and ask those as well. So, Next question. Um, 
can multiple InTouch applications be connected to Enterprise Edition? Yeah, so we'll release the product um, with the ability to, to remotely connect um, and connect to more than one. We're still working out the details on licensing on how we want to handle giving users the ability to connect to multiple InTouch applications. Um, but yes, you as I showed you there, you will be able to connect to um, as many InTouch applications as you like. Well, I guess as your system allows, as if you max out all the resources on your system. But there's but there is no theoretical limit. All right. Next question, Michelle. Okay. Um, let me. I'm trying to type this so that I can um, understand this part. Okay. I'm using Factory Talk Alarm and Events. How many A and E servers can I connect to Enterprise? Well, right now, as many as you want, uh, as long as they're within the same directory. Um, we're not going to be able to connect to alarm and event servers that are in a different directory just because it's not possible with the way that we're subscribing to an alarm and event server. So if you have, right now, if you had 10 alarm and event servers in your directory, you could connect to all 10 of them. So, right, there is no limit, but um, that could change in the future, but, but right now it's unlimited. Um, okay. Are iFix and Factory Talk data sources available yet? <laughs> yeah, so iFix and Factory Talk were the first ones released for Enterprise. Um, so those have been out since mm, 2014, I think, I believe. Uh, yeah, so they're available. If you want, you can download a demo of the Enterprise product off our website. Um, if you have questions about configuring it to get it to work with iFix or Alarmed Events, you can call our tech support team and they'll walk you through um, setting that up. If you want a more detailed just overview of those data source uh, connections and, or, and the enterprise product uh, altogether, you can contact our sales team and we can set up a, an, a webinar for you and just, and, uh, just go through all of your, your concerns with the software and what, how it can work for you. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's out on the website so you can go grab it now. It will run for 30 days without a license, and then it will then it will shut off. Uh, and we had a follow-up question to that: is is this only available on the Enterprise Edition? Yes, all everything that I showed you today is Enterprise. Um, uh, so, so none of these new none of these things that I talked about today are in version seven. Though I will say, version seven, the alarm and event connection, are, it does support filters. We call it filters in that product. Um, so that's always been there, but all the other data source connections are the uh, tag based, so you have to maintain two separate alarm lists. Um, and the aim for enterprise is where we can, we will support subscriptions and we'll also support tags for those guys that still want them. Um, and uh, so we're doing both, um, but the primary focus for us is to get the subscriptions in there. So next question there. Okay, I believe this concludes the end of, of our third webinar um, in the series. And we will um, have this available to um, download and view at your um, leisure. So uh, we will be sending the link to you. Um, in the meantime, if you have any other questions, um, anything that may come up, please feel free to contact us. Um, we're always happy to hear from you. Um, and we thank you again for joining us. Yep, thanks guys. And just one just a reminder, if you want to try out the InTouch uh, uh, data source before we do a full release, just contact our um, sales team and we can get that set up for you. All right. Cool. Everyone have a great day. And thanks for thanks for participating. Bye.